lower than I would have guessed. Now, a lot of physicians are uh, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs have a high burnout rate in and of themselves. The EHR typically gets a lot higher. I mean, you're saying 10%. That's that's fascinating. I, you know, I think there's a regulatory burden that's hitting them. There's a documentation yeah. burden that's hitting them. So um, it would be interesting to get a, a, a good feel for I mean, do you have a good feel for what the, the factors are for burnout? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. And, and, and there's several groups, there's several groups that are, uh, that are researching this also. Uh, so there's the Stanford WellMD group, and I just had a call with them last week. Uh, Mayo has a group that's this, this measuring this. I just was emailing back and forth with them an hour ago. And, uh, um, and then the American Medical Association is also measuring this. So there's multiple organizations measuring burnout. There's some others too. And, uh, and as I've had conversations with all three of those groups, um, there, there is an agreement among these groups, and, and I don't want to speak for them, but I, I think that they'd be okay <laughs> with me just saying as I've had conversations with them, that the EHR is a contributor. I think we all agree with that. And there is data that says that the EHR is a contributor. And in some organizations, it is a more significant contributor. But, but, but the, the greatest contributors to, uh, to burnout include a chaotic work environment include a lack of teamwork and shared values in the organization, um, and, uh, and, and, and include uh, too many bureaucratic tasks. And those tend to be your top three issues with, with burnout, um, followed by the EHR. So, we, so right now, I mean, there, there's not complete agreement between all of these groups that are measuring burnout, but, but that tends to be sort of the, the order that, that folks are putting uh, the, the burnout challenges in. And, 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 and I, I prefer to think about the EHR as sort of a, uh, a magnifying glass. If you have poor teamwork and, and you've let your, your bureaucratic processes just go unchecked, because guess what? They're not the same for everybody, not even in the same state. Some organizations have a compliance department that has gone completely crazy. And, and some organizations have been able to, to have meaningful, real discussions about how to, how to rope this in. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and if you uh, have, you know, have worried about the work environment for your clinicians, if you're worrying about these things, you put an EHR over the top of that type of environment, it's going to be fantastic, probably. Um, there's a few other factors involved. And, and, and one example of an organization, I'll, I'll say, is uh, JPS Health System out of Texas. They have really, really high clinician fulfillment, high physician wellness, and really high EHR experience. And it's because they have some of the best teamwork we've ever observed in any of these organizations. And, and uh, um, we... we they have an incredible executive leadership team, and uh, they do some things that are really outside of the box in terms of how they approach things. So um, that's an example of an organization that you put an EHR over the top of. Then the EHR is just, of course, incredibly successful because you have really, really strong teamwork between, uh, uh, between different clinicians and, and the way that they're working together. Mm -hmm.